Are you tired of something like this? Well, at least I am, so check this. This is a dynamic voiceover microphone that I built from old headphones. It was a combination of 3D printing, CAD, electronics, PCB making and some lathe work. So let's watch the build. The first thing is to 3D print the top part which will house the speaker and I just printed it in some basic black PETG. Then I added some foam that will keep the speaker in place. Some trimming was necessary for a nice fit. I'm using a headphone speaker because it really is not much different from dynamic microphone capsule but, uh, but it's very very different from capacitive microphone capsule so keep that in mind. Now to the lathe part. I'm just making the base out of some wood that I found somewhere. Really nothing special to talk about here. Now the main structural parts are complete and it's really starting to pick up its shape. For some reason I decided to paint it in glossy black and it turned out actually really nice. While the paint is drying I'm cutting a middle foam piece. This will hopefully reduce some vibration and serve as some kind of shock mount. I found out that the new razor blade works best for this. What goes well with black? Green. So I painted the foam piece in some highlighter green and I also drilled the hole with diameter of 4mm for a coaxial cable. Speaking of which, I'm using this high quality teflon coaxial cable for no specific reason at all. I just like it and I have some to spare. Man, I just love lead fumes. The polarity here doesn't really matter because we are just using one microphone capsule. And now I'm just gonna glue it all together. I'm using some generic two component glue. For the electric part, I'm making some basic low noise preamp with passive filters, variable gain and volume and I also added an insulated 5V power supply to prevent ground looping. This really reduces noise and interference. Here comes the fun and dangerous part. I'm using a laser to engrave my PCB design into blank PCB material that was painted. And basically I'm removing paint from every place except where the traces are. Here is the result and I have to say that it looks pretty good for homemade PCB. Now I'm etching the exposed copper away in some common ferric chloride. If you are going to do this, please be sure to wear sufficient PPE. 
And it also really helps if the ferric chloride is hot, something like 50 or 60 degrees Celsius. Once the PCB is transparent on the exposed places, that means that it's finished and I'm just gonna wash it in some water and scrub away the black paint with some steel wool. You really could just use acetone, but I was, I was, I was kinda lazy. In the end, it should look something like this. I've cut the board to size with sheet metal scissors and then use some file to send it down a bit. Make sure to screw up camera angle just like I did and besides that I'm just drilling holes for THD components. And this is the boring part, I'm just picking and placing components on the board. And finally soldering the components. I'm using a basic leaded solder, not some lead free stuff, because as the good old saying goes, once you go lead, you never go back. The operational amplifier comes with SOIC package, which could be a bit difficult for beginners. This is an enclosure for the PCB, it's a very simple model designed in FreeCAD. I also put the capacitors on the back side because I messed up some measurements. And this 3.5mm jack will be used as output for the headphones. Next I designed these basic knobs that I then printed in two colors. Now for the final assembly there is not much going on, just some soldering, gluing and heat shrink tube applying. I'm planning to use this with my notebook that comes with combined 3.5mm jack just like your phone and I'm basically hijacking the microphone line and connecting it to output of my preamp circuit. The left and right channels will go straight out to the 3.5mm output jack for headphones. And this is it. Looks good, right? Sure, it could be much better, but I'm happy with this. I also designed this pop filter with printed in fabric, or at least I think that it's fabric and it works surprisingly well. It just clips into place and that's it. It doesn't go anywhere.
in the end, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Feel free to ask some questions about this build in comments. If you like this video, please leave a like. And I will see you in the near future. Bye.